So the last of the sort of major healing retouching to do here is for the bruise under the uh, left eye as we see it here. Again, I'm going to make sure that I've still got the retouching work layer active in the layers panel because that's where my edits will be deposited. And then click and hold down on the current tool that's active in there, which was the patch tool. And this time we're going to use the healing brush tool. So unfortunately, the spot and the healing brush tool look very, very similar. But the one at the top, you have no choice over what Photoshop uses to heal and retouch with when you click or you click and drag with the mouse. But the healing brush tool is built to work with skin. It is a skin healing and retouching tool. So I'll click on that one and it works very much like the clone stamp tool. So you'll have to alt and left click to sample and then you'll have to click and drag to do the patching and healing. Up at the top, we'll come back to the brush tip last. Uh, mode in here, well, we're going to leave this set to normal and usually that should be fine. Uh, source is sampled, we are going to sample. I'm going to make sure that the align checkbox is turned on. And then we're also going to make sure that we turn on the uh, from the drop down menu current and below to make sure that we're sampling from the original image as well, because that's where all the content is. And before we actually apply these edits, it's important to know that when you are healing and retouching a face, whether that is skin for a human or whether that's say fur for an animal, it does affect the way that you heal and retouch where the line of the face runs down the bridge of the nose, as Snowboarder Steve does here, that skin tones work in opposite directions. Skin tones work in that direction on one side of the face, and they work in the opposite direction on the other side of the face. If you're going to do any healing and retouching, heal and retouch by sampling from and then editing on the same half of the face. So with that in mind, I'm going to sample from a region that is well, around here. So it's it's still kind of, you know, it's kind of skin that's around the cheek area. There's no blemishes in there, no discernible kind of marks or features. And that will be a good place for me to be able to sample and remove this portion here. So brush tip finally, I'm going to pick up this and then increase the size and then just make sure that is, well, somewhere between sort of 50 and 60 should be fine. Uh, mindset to 56, hit the return key. And then I'm going to hover my cursor here. I am actually going to click and drag in this sort of direction down here. Zoom in a bit closer, hold down the Alt key, go to here, and then possibly maybe just need to increase the brush size a little bit in here to 64. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So Alt and left click, start here, click and hold down the mouse, drag, and then just remove that large section in there and round to get rid of it. Now it's, it's fine. It's not a brilliant tool, but if you take a look at before, that's far more distracting. It does tend to smudge sometimes skin areas. So if you've got a very dark and a very light portion of skin, it will smudge and smooth it a little bit. That is unfortunately part and parcel of the way that the tool works in, in an attempt to try and blend it sometimes smudges. So yeah, that is how we can remove that uh, bruise from underneath the eye. Uh, as a last step, if you find that there are things like on the hat, we've got lots of fluff and things like that. We want to get rid of those. They serve no purpose except, except to distract. Well, then it will be a case of going back to your spot healing brush tool. Make sure that the usual options are turned on. So we need to make sure that content aware is turned on and sample all layers. Then go back and increase the brush size in here just to be able to. Yeah, I think something like 35 to 40 should be fine and then hit the return key, hover over and click on those regions. And there's even a thread here, so I can drag along that thread and it will still honor the ridges in the hat as well. So there's a limit that I prefer to morally uh, limit myself to of with healing and retouching, especially portraits, but I'm perfectly comfortable with removing, removing a bit of fluff from a hat. Um, because it is distracting. And you see here, we're just clicking and dragging. So Photoshop dictates which bits of the image it's going to use. Even if you get, you know, say this button here, if it's too distracting, then I'll just tap the right square bracket key to make my brush size bigger and then just drag over it and get rid of it. You know, it's better to remove something that is going to be problematic than leave it in there. Um, so it will do that kind of thing for us as well. Maybe down here, the bit of thread, 
reduce my brush size, click and drag into that, and then just stop there like so. So it's incredibly handy. If you want to remove a logo from a jacket, again, the spot healing brush tool is probably good for that. Drag across it, all of it. Don't leave any part of that unshaded when you drag across it. When you let go of the mouse, you might find it gets a bit of stitching repeated in there, but just drag across it and it will usually remove that with a few left clicks of the mouse and repeating that. So if you don't want branding to be in your image, that's another way of removing it. And there we go. So we've removed some of the fuzz. We've got rid of the uh, the uh, the red blood vessel on the eye and the bruise. And so that was before. And that's after. So we are looking close to be able to take this piece of artwork, combine it with a background now uh, to complete the montage. So I'm going to go to file and I'll choose save. In the next video, we will create the background artwork to drop this into.